Welcome to this afternoon's press conference introducing Brad Osmus as the club's new field manager. Before we hear from general manager Billy Epler and Brad, we have a few special introductions. First, on stage to my far left, Liz and Brad Osmus, general manager Billy Epler, and owner Artie Marino. Also joining us today are several members of the Angels family. We're pleased to have with us club president John Carpino and club chairman Dennis Kuhl. Two big arms we missed an awful lot last season, Keenan Middleton and J.C. Ramirez. Former Angels and current broadcasters, Mark Gubaza and Mark Langston. And FSW broadcasters, Jose Moda and Patrick O'Neill. Clyde Wright, the owner of the Angels' second no-hitter, and 2002 World Series champion, Adam Kennedy. A member of the Angels Hall of Fame and the most successful left-hander in club history, Chuck Finley. And also Hall of Famer, Angels Hall of Famer, Bobby Gritch. At this time, we thank you all for joining us on this very special day. I'd like to call to the, to the podium Angels General Manager, Billy Uther. afternoon. A few weeks ago, we began interviewing candidates for our managerial opening. Our goal when constructing our interview process was to get as complete a view of each person as possible. We sought to assess how they communicated, how they connected with other people, and understand their approach to developing and maintaining a team-first winning culture. We evaluated their ability to problem solve to make effective decisions in the dugout, and their philosophies on coaching, teaching, and leading. Lastly, and in many respects, most importantly, we assessed their adaptability and eagerness to continually grow and develop in the role. Make no mistake, our goal here is to win, year in and year out. And to do that, we have to take a process-based approach in everything that we do. Throughout our entire baseball operation, it is our belief in a highly competitive and constantly evolving environment. Adaptable people with growth mindsets are essential to our long-term success. In our year working with Brad and throughout the interview process, we saw someone who possessed an exceptional combination of the qualities that we were looking for in our next manager. His curiosity, his competitiveness, and his knowledge showed us that he was the right person for the job. With that said, I would like to introduce Brad Osmus as our manager. Brad, would you please come to the podium? And Artie. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be, a, uh, I, I can't say be a member of the Angels organization because I have been for a year, uh, but I'm very, I'm very excited to be the manager of the Los Angeles Angels. So uh, I'd like to thank Artie, Billy, John, uh, the entire baseball operations uh, staff who's here right now who I've, I've gotten to know over the course of the year. 
And uh, I'm just absolutely thrilled to be back in Southern California where I've lived for the last 25 years and I uh, don't have to worry about rainouts too much. Um, and I'd like to thank Keenan Middleton for having my back as president. <laughs> I'm not interested in politics, Key, but <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do appreciate it. Um, like Billy had mentioned, adaptability is something that's very important to the, to the angels. And part of the reason I came to the angels be, was because I needed to adapt. Uh, analytics is part of the game. And I have an understanding of analytics. I had an understanding before I arrived here. Uh, I had been using numbers to create sky reports since about the year 2000, long before analytics were in vogue, when the infra information was a, a lot more vague and, and a little more raw. Um, and so during the off season, Billy, I'm sure, did a due diligence on me going into the 2018 season uh, and invited me to be a part of his staff as a special assistant. I, doing my due diligence on Billy Epler, checked on his background because I didn't really know Billy too well. Um, but I knew where he came from, and I knew the organization that he came from was heavily analytic, and that they used the numbers to make their players and their teams better. And I think that's the important thing. So I had to adapt. And part of the reason I, I was looking forward to joining Billy on, the, on his staff in the baseball oper operations department was because I wanted to find out more about how we can help players on the field be better, how we can help teams win. This is, this is why we're here. We're here to win baseball games. I mean, Artie's made it clear since he's taken over this organization that winning is the important thing. We want a championship. I spent 18 years as a player, four years as a manager, and I do not have a World Series ring. I want a World Series ring. Uh, and that's very important to me. Um, and that's going to be the goal. I, I, I'm not going to care what the pundits say. My, my message to the players is win today. I don't care what happened yesterday. I don't care what people say we're going to do or what other teams are going to do. I care about the Los Angeles Angels, and I care about winning today. And if we do that every single day, we're going to be just fine. Uh, again, I'm very excited uh, you, you know, to have an opportunity to lead a club like this with some of the players. Uh, I appreciate the guys that have come out, and uh, you know, just going forward, it, it's going to be we're going to in the next few weeks put together a coaching staff. I'm sure there'll be questions about that. Uh, I don't have answers on it. We're going to be put, putting together a coaching staff. Uh, we're going to have a plan for spring training, uh, and yeah, we're going to use some of these things that I talked about, and some of those are numbers based. But in the end, baseball is played by human beings, and we can't ever forget that. We use the numbers and apply them to humans, and hopefully, we make them a better player and a better team. Thank you. Okay, at this time, for the members of the media, we'd like to open it up for questions. We have two microphones available, so if you would please wait for the microphone, raise your hand. And uh, before you ask your question, if you would introduce yourself, please. James Allen, Angels Radio, AMA 30. Um, you said you've been with the organization for a year. You had a chance to you know, see the team and what, what they have to offer. But what was the most intriguing part about the job? And not only just the players, but the organization that um, helped you make a decision? Well, the job crossed a bunch of sections in the organization. Um, player development, amateur scouting, pro scouting, um, on the field with the big league club, especially during spring training. Um, one of my favorite parts of baseball are is the camaraderie and the people. So I enjoyed being around some of the big league guys when I was in the clubhouse around the field in spring training. And I enjoyed being around the guys in the minor leagues. I visit, I visit all the minor league affiliates in our system. I've gotten to know a lot of the minor league players. It's, it's a little bit of a unique situation in the sense that I really do know the people in the organization, whether it's the people in the front office or the minor league staff uh, or the clubhouse guy in instructional league. I've met them all. It's kind of a unique organization and it makes me mu very comfortable being here because it's the same faces and the same names that I knew six months ago. Uh, Jeff Fletcher, Orange County Register. Uh, Brad, when you look at your time managing the Tigers and the guy you were then, how do you compare to, to what you are now and what would you like to do differently? Well, I mean, I'm not going to get into spe 
specifics of what I would do differently, but there's, there's no question that experience is an asset. I think in every walk of life, experience is an asset. And in managing, whether you experience something in the clubhouse or you experience something tactically on the field, rather than having to reconsider it, it becomes a little more reflexive and you can react to it and you have an understanding of what, what the end result will be if you don't react quickly or, or properly. So uh, I know there's, and, and part of the reason I was actually hired in Detroit was the, the new wave hire the young manager with no experience that can relate to the players. But the truth of the matter is experience helps you everywhere. And if you can still relate to players and have experience as a manager, I don't understand how it can't be an asset. えっと、古川とのボンコバラコーチと申します。おめでとうございます。え、あの、日本人だけではなくて、え、アメリカのファンの方もちょっと気に変わると思うんですけども、大谷選手をどのように使っていくのか、それをあの監督の方から教えていただ
I hope it's the type of team that looks like they have a world championship ring on their finger. That's what I hope, first of all. Um, there is, you know, there is a level of professionalism and character we expect. Uh, you know, you represent the Angels when you put the uniform on, and we expect you to play the game in a particular manner. Uh, that includes running balls out. Uh, if you, 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 as a hitter, you pop a ball up, you're frustrated. You still got to give an effort. Uh, you know, I don't want someone running down the line so hard they're going to blow out their hamstring. But we, there's a level of prof professionalism that is required to be a major league player. Um, so that, at the end of the day, I hope the people that are across the field from us and the, and the people that are sitting in the stands, the Angels fans that are watching us, say, you know what, they play the game the right way. Hi, I'm Fritz TV Japan. I was talking in Japanese. えっと、やっていけるのかそれともバッターだけなのかそういうところも含めてちょっとお話を伺いたいと思います。Her um, name is Sayaka. My name is Sayaka Arai with Fuji TV. Um, I know you kind of touched upon Shohei a little earlier, but um, she has about she has two questions. One is how is he doing? How is he recovering since his surgery? Uh, the second one is going into the next season. Um, how would he? How do you think he would be, be performing as a hitter or a two-way player? Yeah, as it relates to uh, Shohei, um, right now he's got uh, a, a high degree of his range of motion, so he's able to almost get full uh, elbow flexion, uh, which we're encouraged with this time. And then, um, as far as it, it relates to moving forward, uh, we have to just kind of see at each marker uh, where he's at physically. We'll lean on the doctors and their expertise to kind of guide us um, as it relates to his availability. Um, hopefully, he's in that batter's box sooner rather than later. Um, but we're, we're not going to take chances uh, and put him out there too early. So we're going to lean on the experts. And, uh, and use their guidance. Maria Guardado, MLB.com. Uh, Billy, how did Brad do on the written exam? <laughs> We're still grading them. Uh, it'll be four to six weeks, and then they'll get the results in the mail. <laughs> no, in, all, in all seriousness, um, I, know, I know there was a lot, a lot made of that, and I kind of got a kick out of it a little bit. But... Um, you know, what we wanted to really do with every single candidate was to kind of peel back um, their critical thinking ability and how they problem solve. And one of the things that we thought was the most appropriate was to give them time to think through an answer. So if I asked you a question on a particular probability or expectancy of something happening or even a, a question about stolen base probability, so on and so forth, if I ask you that on the spot, it doesn't give you enough time to really think through the answer and be able to articulate your answer. So we just thought it was more fair for the candidates rather than just asking them on the spot um, to give them a, a, a little bit of time to kind of think through some of the, uh, some of the questions. So that was the impetus behind it, and, uh, and we feel good about the process, um, the qualitative aspects of our interview, as well as the quantitative aspects of the interview. Um, they were long days, right? They were short. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so, so that was kind of the, the, the reasoning for that, uh, that interview going the format that it did. Brad, you talked about uh, visiting the minor leagues. Um, what's your assessment of what the Angels have in the pipeline? Actually, there, there are some guys that are, are very exciting down the pipeline. Um, you know, some of the names, some of the names you know, like Joe Adele, certainly, uh, Matt Theis, who, who was at AAA in Salt Lake all year. Um, a couple of young pitchers in Canning and Suarez, um, and these guys are still developing. They're not. And there's other names. Don't get me wrong. Um, these guys are still developing, but uh, and Ren Gipo is another name. 
very exciting young player. Uh, they got a chance to help the Angels. And I think uh, long before I came to this organization, I think Billy and his staff have done a nice, nice job of building up that minor league system. As you can see by the minor league rankings, uh, they've climbed quite a bit in the last few years. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed watching some of those guys play, and, and you're going to see some of them at some point this year. Liz and Brad, welcome to Southern California. I'm Margaret Narumi from NHK. We broadcast many, many, many baseball games back to Japan, especially the Angels. My question to you is, you're not Southern California, but did you grow up idolizing any Southern California baseball players or coaches, managers? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I grew up in the Northeast, so I, I and I was, I was a Red Sox fan growing up, but I gave that up as soon as I got out of high school. Because <laughs> no, 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 no. I gave that up when I got out of high school because I got drafted by the Yankees. So, um, but no, at the time, as a as a kid, I was a huge baseball fan. I, I would I would watch. Back then, there was only one game a week on TV, but I would I would fall asleep at night listening to games on the radio, uh, kind of the old school style. I was a I was a collector of baseball cards. I I obviously played Little League and Summer Ball, and I had my favorite players, but uh, most of them were, were Red Sox. Brett, how about Although you? I do, uh, Rod Carew is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, how valuable did you feel this last year was to be out of the dugout and in this Angels organization and learning things? Like, how did you feel the last, you know, 12 months can help you now as you're the Angels manager? Well, it was twofold. It, it allowed me to step away and kind of assess myself, uh, assess what, you know, how Detroit went, what was good, what wasn't good. Um, it allowed me to be at, at home a little bit. My younger daughter was graduating from high school. I missed my older daughter's graduating from high school and, and her move into college. So I was able to do some stuff with, uh, with my family. Um, but really, most importantly, it, it allowed me, and Billy allowed me to, to dive into what, what is the meat and potatoes of analytics now. Um, and the amount of information, it was remarkable to me because I hadn't seen it. And, uh, you know, I think I'm a pretty quick study on it. Uh, but that's really, that was the crux of, of why when Billy asked me to come over here, I felt like it was going to be a really good fit. Uh, Brad, you're, you're replacing a guy who's been in that seat for a long time. Uh, how do you feel about kind of stepping into those shoes? Well, so, sh and uh, let me, I'll say right now, Soch was great with me. Uh, believe it or not, Soch and I were on the same team back in 1993. Uh, when I got traded to the San Diego Padres, he was winding down his career, and he was actually hurting on the disabled list. Uh, but Soch and I were teammates at one point. So we've, we've known each other for, for 25, years, <coughs> excuse me, 25 years. And, and Soch texted me yesterday uh, when the press release was sent out. Soch texted me, congratulated me, and wished me luck. And he was great with me this past year. I would sit in his office at times, and we'd talk baseball. And uh, uh, I really appreciate everything he did. He, he immediately brought me in as part of the team in spring training, even on the field, in the uniform, throwing batting practice or hitting some ground balls. Uh, replacing him, you know, it's not going to ever be easy to replace someone like so. so. I replaced a guy by the name of Jim Leal in Detroit, another very well-known, you know, Hall of Fame-style type manager. And... Uh, you know, that's the nature of the game. Soch was here for 19 years. I don't know that we'll ever see that again. Uh, but I'm not here to try and be Mike Soch. I'm not, you know, I, I think he was a great, great manager. Uh, maybe he continues to manage, but uh, I'm not here to be Mike Soch.